Okay guys, this is Singularity Beast Upgrades Part 6. This video will be focusing mainly on replacing the faulty video card and showing you the steps that I had to take to do that. Also looking at the hardware that I've decided on to finish off this upgrade series. Now I never stop upgrading my systems so I'll be certainly covering future upgrades to this system in other videos. There's still a lot to cover in this series though. I still need to complete all the upgrades and go over all the performance and temperature results and also do some overclocking. Okay, so I know you've heard this before but it's time to look at the last of the hardware that I need to put into the system. So at last I've made up my mind about the fans. I've decided to go with the Phobia fans that I've mentioned previously. And this is because I'm not sure when the new Noctua fans are coming out. It could be quite a while. And I need to get the fans out of the system that are currently installed. Because I need to do a major dust clean. Here is a replacement video card for the faulty card that's in the system at the moment. So you can see I've got an empty 5.25 inch drive bay here at the moment. This is for the switch panel for my lighting. This is the one that I've decided on. The only problem is that it's not black, so I'll need to paint it matte black. The reason I got a silver one is because there's been no black ones in stock for months. This is pre-assembled by Performance PCs. It's a custom switch panel that they make up with two vandal switches. There's a 22mm and a 16mm. These ones have blue LEDs, they're all pre-wired exactly how I want them. So this fits into a 5.25 inch drive bay. I also need to drill some more holes in the switch panel here and also on the other side to hold it into the drive bay before I paint it black. So obviously you still need to install that for the cold cathodes which I've mentioned previously. Bolts and washers for installing the new phobia fans onto the 360 millimeter radiator. This is the SATA 3 panel upgrade for the hot swap bays in the Corsair Obsidian 800D. So I just wanted to upgrade them to SATA 3 so that I can put my Vertex 3 SSD into the hot swap bays. This is just some extra wiring that I got in case I wanted to swap the Vandal switches over to these black ones, which I'll probably be doing, and that will mean I'll have to re-solder everything myself. So these are some more dust filters that I'm going to try. I'm just going to install them, see if they fit, see how they look, and see how well they work. I haven't necessarily settled on these ones yet, but I think they look pretty good. I think they'll suit the system pretty well, and it looks like they'll fit because the holes are pretty close to the edges. The mesh is very fine so it'll catch a lot of dust quite nicely. They're actually a Silverstone filter for 120 millimeter fans. I'll put the exact model number up on the screen. Okay so I just thought I'd show you some of the process of draining my graphics card loop. So the reason I'm draining it is to pull out the dud card that I've got. It's actually the middle card in the GTX 580 3GB edition Tri-SLI setup. So obviously I have to remove all the cards. Then I have to remove the water block from the dud card. Put the air cooler back on it and send it back. And then I have to remove the air cooler from this card the stock cooler of course and put the water block onto it so a massive operation very annoying when you've got a dud card okay so what I've done so far here is I've actually had to undo the quick disconnect on the red loop the CPU loop as well so you can see I've just got that pushed back here and the reason I've had to undo that is to get it out of the way of the graphics card so that I can pull the cards out. So I've just pulled all the 
power connectors out of the cards and push them up the back here. So you can see this tube here normally comes down across the graphics cards and connects to here. And then this tube here does the same thing down across the graphics cards and connects to here. So both of those are back and out of the way and I'll show you how much liquid the quick disconnects spilled. So you can see just one little drop. I haven't dried them at all. That's what came out of them when I undid them. So you can see how good these things are. So the other thing I've undone is this quick disconnect here and basically I just leave all this side full it's all sealed and full so the pump is still you know full of fluid and primed I just drain this side so all the cooling out of the water blocks on the graphics cards and there's more quick disconnects up here so this side stays sealed you know because the quick disconnect is sealing it sealed here so the radiator stays full so basically the graphics cards are isolated and they're the only part that gets drained oh, and the reservoir too okay so when I want to drain them all I do is compress this quick disconnect because that's what happens when you connect these up it actually pushes the inside of the quick disconnect downwards compresses it and opens it so I get a screwdriver and do that very carefully I don't scratch any of it you actually push down on the inside of it and then that lets the air in to this tube here and it lets the coolant out the bottom and it drains all the graphics cards through the reservoir and out here. And what I've done here is I've just connected the other side of a quick disconnect again to compress the inside of the quick disconnect and open it up. And so it drains out into here. So all the graphics cards should be empty now. And I'll just move on to the next step of removing the reservoir and pulling the graphics cards out. So the graphics cards are out of the system. Looks very empty. So they just pull out, all three of them at the same time. So they pull out together. It's actually quite easy to get them out. You know, there's a lot of weight there, so you've just got to make sure you grab that bottom card firmly. And what I do, I undo all the screws and let the cards rest on the bottom screw there, which is done up very tightly. So they're basically resting on the screw which is for the sound card and then I just lift them up over that screw and pull them all out. Sometimes I have to push back the locking mechanisms on the PCI Express slots as well. So the reservoir is also out. I've disconnected that tube which was connected to the graphics cards and I've plugged it just in case there's a little bit of extra coolant still in there. So that was connected to the reservoir which is just down here so you can see it was just connected to there and then that's that quick disconnect just there was connected right there so just thought I'd show you how easily it all comes apart if you design your system strategically with some quick disconnects you can make something like this a lot easier. The water block has been swapped to the new graphics card and the new graphics card is installed on the EK serial link with the other cards ready to go into the system. Okay so it's all finished the new card is installed the loop is up and running again and it's actually been going for quite a while now so all the air is bled out of the loop Okay, so here's the faulty graphics card, just sitting down here on the ground ready for me to put the stock cooler back on it and send it back. I just thought I'd give you a look at the naked PCB of the faulty video card that I'm sending back. So this is a Ganwood Phantom GTX 580 3GB edition. Just an opportunity to have a good look at the PCB. Now I'm sorry about this video being so delayed. 
I had trouble getting some parts and ran into a few other difficulties. I'm hoping that the next few videos will be able to come more quickly. So that sums up this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and also give the video a thumbs up. Thanks guys.